The yield curve inverted once again. The Fed is going to chat at Jackson Hole and stocks are in the red. Matt Cheslock is here to talk the scoop. Matt, thank you for joining me on this Thursday. I'd like to first start off with some economic data. Purchasing Managing Index, that's a good read on manufacturing, came in about 50. A uh, read under 50 is considered contractionary. So what is your gauge of the manufacturing sector? You know, it's funny, is that really, I guess that the timing of that moved the market that we saw today, but a lot of it was probably predicated on the Fed speak that we heard from Jackson Hole. So I don't know if it had much to do with it. It probably should be taking more of a forefront picture now that it ticked just under 50, you know, the lowest reading we've had in 10 years. What is that saying about the U.S. economy? Um, are we going to start talking about having to uh, cut rates even further? And then we get a Fed announcement right after that that says, oh, we don't need to cut rates. So I don't know what anyone's looking at anymore. Matt, I'm so glad that you said that because it seems like it's it, there's a lot of confusing headlines coming out. There's a lot of confusing data, confusing tweets. Now we have the yield curve inverting. Um, President Trump is yelling at about Germany's negative yielding debt. Our budget deficit is two years in advance larger than we thought. And I saw a statistic by 2029, it will be uh, the largest since World War II. So what is, what is the president factory in with that. He'll be gone by then, so I'm not sure he cares about the deficit going in 2029, quite frankly. But, uh, you know, I mean, these there's all kinds of different um, tweets and, as you mentioned, social media, and now we're getting these interviews that have such uh, polarizing opinions. I mean, these are on the opposite ends of what we're expecting. That's what this market is reacting to. They have no idea what's going on, no idea what to expect. Uh, we thought we had an accommodative Fed at almost 100% expectation of a rate cut in September. That's going to tick down a little bit. That's going to only further cause confusion when we have no idea what the Fed is actually looking at. How are they going to compare our economy to foreign economies? Are we going to go to negative yields? You know, do we going to get close to that? We've got inverted yield curves. That hasn't really moved the market except for last Wednesday when we were down 800. Other than that, really hasn't mattered. So I'm, I'm you know, I can't wait for summer to uh, not end, uh, but I think we all need some time off here to, to digest all this, uh, this minutia. Yeah, it's, it's so true. And when I first started this job a couple years back, the stock market was in a euphoric stage. It was, you know, one churn after the next, uh, record high, record high, record high. Then December hit and things got a little shaky. The yield curve keeps inverting. I mean, are these some signs to pay attention to? Well, historically, yes, They've, you have to pay attention to them. And I don't want to make light that they're not important. Uh, they don't just creep up on you and invert and then chaos is ensues. It does take a little time, but they are warning signs. Um, we are, in a, I think, a little bit different of a time uh, based on where rates are and where yields are, um, you know, in Europe and, and Asia. Um, so I'm not so certain that you're going to be able to play history out as we're. But historically, there's a time period after the inversion that is good for stocks. We've seen that. We've seen that recover from that massive uh, knee jerk reaction last Wednesday. So uh, but now we're taking a look at retail. We talked about retail last week. Maybe that would be. Uh, the, a boon for the market, and we've seen it. It's different retailers. It's not your, uh, you know, your shopping center stores anymore. It's it's the Lowe's, it's the Home Depots, it's Target, which has reinvented itself. Um, you know, these companies have done a nice job getting out in front, getting in front of the uh, American consumer, uh, and they've done a great job at providing. Uh, product for them to buy. And that's what's holding this economy up right now. And we've seen it from the rally that we saw in some of those names this week. Matt, they sure are. You know, it's always good to reinvent yourself. You know, Kim Kardashian did it. She did a great job. Paris Hilton is currently trying to do it. Maybe she could get some lessons from Home Depot and Walmart. In the meantime, are you noticing any kind of inefficiencies? Matt, I heard an interview saying that uh, student debt is going to be the, the next housing crisis. What do you think about that? Well, I got one in college and two going in, and, you know, student debt is right at the forefront. You know, when you start to hear about politicians talking about that as one of their central piece for what they're running on, uh, we know how important it's going to be. Uh, it's massive. It's numbing. Um, it's, it's scary for these kids that are coming out. Uh, it's daunting. 
Um, so we're going to have to pay attention to it really quickly. And uh, I think the cost of colleges have just gotten so out, far out of line right now. Um, I'd be interested to see what, what a candidate has to, on a proposal basis, as opposed to just wiping it all out. We've got to do something about the cost increasing in college. We've got to make it affordable for most. Well, Matt, I have to finish up with one more question since there's a lot of a lot of confusion out there. Uh, Matt, who makes the best chicken sandwich? That was the debate this week, so I have to ask you, Popeyes, Wendy's, what would you say? Wow, uh, it'd be hard to say Chick-fil-A doesn't have it. Uh, every time you drive past a, a Chick-fil-A, go into a tournament or something with my kids, they want to stop. So uh, if they have any vote in this, it would certainly be uh, Chick-fil-A. Uh, I haven't tried some of the other ones. I'd like to try the Popeyes one maybe this weekend. Uh, but, uh, you know, certainly that's, that's, that's an argument I'd love to be involved in. You certainly can be part of the conversation after you drive your kids down this weekend to uh, college. Maybe you can uh, let us know next week. Absolutely. My pleasure. And let me know how the crushes go.